protective posture of his own alliance by accommodating international monetary fund and World Bank policies that impose neoliberal austerity on South Africa, ensuring that Western capital dominates member, the economic landscape. Up. So the Thank question you. is, what is his response your now that the NK has up. unveiled him? Thank you. Honorable VG Reddy. Thank you, Speaker. I find it very hard, and I need you to help me here in believing anything this President says. And I'm not the only one. Uh, I'm supported by the majority of South Africans, as well as members of his own party who are deserting the ANC at phenomenal numbers. While his call for the urgent reform of the UN Sec Security Council may sound bold on the international stage, we must ask ourselves, how can we trust these promises on this matter when here at home, objective evidence shows that he's consistently failed to deliver on promises to improve the lives of the overwhelming black majority. Under his leadership, the government has defied the progressive posture of his own alliance by accommodating international monetary fund and World Bank policies that impose neoliberal austerity on South Africa, ensuring that Western capital dominates member, the economic landscape. Up. So the Thank question you. is, what is his response your now that the NK has up. unveiled him? Thank Honorable you. Honorable President. Honorable members, can you please not debate across the floor? President will answer the question. Order, allow the president to make his remark, whether he answers, how he answers, the president has the right to respond to the member. Mr. President. Honorable Speaker, I am struggling in my head, <laughs> quite honestly, to find a thread that from the honorable members um, articulation what the question was and I heard him talk about failure to deliver members of my party leaving my party the IMF and the World Bank neoliberal uh, so to be quite honest I would like to I would have liked to answer a clear question, and I'm struggling, quite frankly. Thank you. Uh, Honorable NLS Nkwankwa. Honorable Nkwankwa. Can we move to the second question, number eight, asked by Reverend Mishra. Honorable Reverend Mishra, the question is about the government's position on the United Nations Declaration, known as the Pact for the Future, and what this pact means for the Republic. Honorable the President. Madam Speaker, the main focus of the 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly was the summit of the future. And its key outcome document, the Pact for the Future. The Pact in itself seeks to forge a new global consensus for the global community to protect the needs and interests of present and future generations. And the Pact covers a number of areas critical to the progress of humanity. Before I go on, it was a real honor and a pleasure for us as South Africa to participate in this debate, a debate and a process that was ably led by Namibia and Germany. It was a proud moment to see a sister country 
on our continent and in our region having led a process of this nature that has resulted in a global agreement that has brought about a number of individuals that included heads of state and government, observers, non-governmental organizations, UN system organizations, civil society, and a number of other organizations, think tanks, and many others. And this was for a broader push to increase the engagement of diverse actors. And the formal summit itself was preceded by another process which Namibia and Germany led in, which included, we were told, up to 7,000 individuals representing all segments of society. So the summit process and the pact have been deep, have deeply enriched, were deeply enriched by contributions of millions of voices and thousands of stakeholders from around the world. We were proud, yes, to work alongside Namibia and our representatives were closely involved in the whole process. And world leaders representing many countries adopted the Pact for the Future, and the Pact itself is a wide-ranging international agreement that has been in the making for many years, covering entirely new areas as well as issues on which agreement has not been possible over many decades. And the document aims above all to ensure that international institutions can deliver in the face of what the world is going through right now. Now, as the Secretary General said, which was observed by Honorable Reverend Mishwe, he said, we cannot create a future fit for our grandchildren with a system built by our grandparents. That in many ways encapsulates the key objective of the Pact of the Future. And the Pact covers a broad range of issues, as I said, including peace and security, sustainable development, climate change, and uh, the new area which was debated and agreed upon after long discussions was the digi digital cooperation, human rights, gender, youth, and, the fu and future generations. And all these matters then culminated in this pact of the future. For us as South Africa, this spoke to precisely what we stand for, as clearly articulated in our constitution, also articulated in the Freedom Charter, a base document that is widely supported also in our country and by a number of political parties that are represented in this parliament. On sustainable development, climate change and financing for development, one could say that the entire pact is designed in a way to speed up the process of implementation of the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. There was consensus on a detailed agreement ever at the UN on the need to reform the international financial architecture so that it can better represent and serve developing countries, particularly countries in the global south, including giving developing countries or economic countries, as I call them, a greater say in how decisions are taken at international financial institutions level. It also included mobilizing more financial financing rather and multilateral development banks to help developing economic countries more and to meet their own development needs and reviewing the sovereign debt architecture. And all these matters we found as very important for the future but also focusing on the future generations. 
the Digital Cooperation Pact is a comprehensive global framework for digital cooperation. And at the heart of the compact is a commitment to design, to use, and govern technology, and to make sure that technology works for all. And on human rights and gender, the pact aims to strengthen our work on human rights, gender equality, as well as the empowerment of women. For South Africa, the Pact for the Future reflects many of the key elements of our international agenda, the effective implementation of the actions contained in the Pact for the Future will make a significant contribution to building a better world and a better Africa. Madam Speaker, I thank you. Welcome to LT Celeb Times. That's it for now, guys. And please tell us what you think about this on the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching.